Today we're gonna make monkfish and a strone, also commonly known as anglerfish. He has his little fishing rod, he hangs over here. Just swim by, pa pa pa, having a nice day, and then he sucks you in. If you look, the teeth only go in one direction. They go down, so you can get in, but there's no way out. We're gonna use all the different parts of the monkfish to make the broth. We're gonna take the cheeks out. They have big, giant cheeks. We're gonna use all the different little pieces of meat that are all really good. So you could make this with just the scraps, or you could actually make it with the, with the tail itself. This is gonna have a ton of flavor. I make it at home a lot with striped bass. You catch a lot of striped bass, and you have to come up with creative ways to eat it. Otherwise, the family gets tired of it. If you're gonna make a pot of soup, you could use the head. I'm gonna clean up the tail. Move that out of skin, which is no good. The skin is real gelatinous on this particular fish, so you can never cook it to get it crispy, and it doesn't really add anything to the dish. It's kind of a funny, slimy texture to it. All right, so we're gonna get our broth going now, and then we'll come back to the monkfish when we're ready for it. We've cut up a variety of vegetables that are in season. We have a little bit of onion, leeks, butternut squash, celery root, potato, rutabaga. So we're gonna go over to our pot and we're gonna build our flavor. We're gonna start out with a good amount of oil. We're gonna take our garlic, pick out some fat cloves. We're gonna basically just crush them with our hand a little bit, right? This is gonna get the oils to release. Right, I always use an expression with the guys at the restaurant, the stoves have a knob for a reason. You don't have to cook everything on super high flame. Let it cook. That's how you're gonna get your flavor out of it. Right, to this we're gonna flavor it with a little bit of thyme, bay leaf. Then we're gonna add just a couple whole dried chilies. They don't really add heat, but they're gonna add some flavor. We're gonna add our leeks. We're gonna add our onions. Now we're just gonna let that cook a little bit. We're not really looking to cook it. We're just looking to break it down a little bit and get some flavor. Then we're gonna move on to our tomato. We wanna use good quality plum tomatoes in a can because we want the soup to have some chunks of tomato, but we don't want giant, giant pieces. We're not looking for puree. This is a one-pot meal. You know, all over the world they eat fish soup. In America, it's time for us to start eating fish soup. All right, we're gonna add our bay leaf. We're gonna add our thyme. Tie with a piece of string so it's easy to take out. All right, we're gonna add that in. We'll let that saute for a second. All right, we're gonna add our tomato. We're gonna get some water. Yeah, I wanna keep tasting it because I wanna make sure that I have enough flavoring and seasoning in it, right? But we haven't made any stock, so we basically made, we're making basically soup out of water. So we wanna make sure that it's gonna have good flavor. And the vegetables keep soaking up the salt and all the flavoring. So that's why I keep adjusting the flavoring. All right, so we're gonna let that come up to a simmer. We'll come over here, play with our fish a little bit. Look how beautiful white the monkfish is, you know? Now we're gonna clean up all the meat off the bones. It's all gonna go into the soup. Most of the time, this is a part of the fish that fishermen throw away at sea. You know, part of the problem is the way the quote is set up for monkfish, this is all the scraps are considered part of the gross weight, so that's why a lot of them throw it back. People will ask me all the time, they'll say, you know, what time of year is the best time of year for seafood? And without a doubt, it's the winter time. Water's cold, meat's firm, fish have good fat to them. To me, it's the best time of year to eat fish. All right, so I see our broth start to come up to a simmer. So we're gonna add our vegetables. We're gonna add our harder stuff first, which I know is gonna take a little bit longer. Butternut squash, celery root, parsnip, potato, rutabaga, kind of give it a nice little horseradishy flavor. A little bit more water. Now we're gonna let this come back up to a boil. We're gonna taste it, check our seasoning. And a little bit more seasoning. Just to give it a little bit more flavor, I'm gonna throw a branch or two of some wild fennel in there. Now it's got a lot of flavor. Right, as it cooks, the vegetables absorb the salt. So we gotta keep seasoning it a little bit. Then in a separate pot, we're gonna take a little bit of the broth. We're gonna add our pasta to it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get a couple different kinds of pasta shapes together. This is all stuff that we make here at the, at the restaurant. The idea is that 
If you're doing this at home, you use your leftover bits and pieces of pasta. If you have a little bag and you don't have enough to cook for the family, that's supposed to go for soup. And we're just gonna let the pasta cook in the broth. The pasta's gonna help emulsify the broth. We should let it simmer to all the vegetables are tender. Approximately 20 to 30 minutes. We're gonna add a little bit of olive oil. We're gonna add a little bit more seasoning because the pasta's gonna soak up some of the seasoning. Now we're gonna keep stirring, right? We want that starch from the pasta to help thicken the broth. Now you can already see, you see the difference between that broth and that broth. And that's from the starch. And you're gonna serve it like family style. You could add the pasta right into the broth. The only problem with that is if you have leftover, sometimes the pasta will soak up all the liquid. We don't want to have it soak up all the liquid. And you can add the fish at that particular moment. We're going to season our fish really good. I'm going to add my fish. I'm going to taste it, see what the seasoning is. Oh my God. All right, we're going to check our pasta, see where our pasta is. Use another minute to cook. It's a little white on the inside still. We're going to turn the fire off, we're going to cover it, it's three minutes, that's it. Then we're going to serve it. We like to let it rest a minute, this way everything kind of relaxes, right? Now that it's resting, you can see how the broth gotten real creamy. We're cooking the pasta in it, right? The only other things that are required for this to be really good are a good loaf of bread, finished with raw olive oil. Don't be cheap with the oil. No cheese, right, because it's fish. Minestrone of monkfish.